love coach. Let's find out if you're ready for love. Here's your marvelous host, Nikki Lee. Hello, and welcome to Ready for Love Radio. This is your host and love coach, Nikki Lee. Now, ladies, do you want to find a way to get your man's attention? And men, do you want, and I, this is a silly question, but do you want your lady or your significant other to learn how, let, let's start with, put the kids to bed and close the door. I think maybe let's start there. This is definitely going to be a mature content show. What do you think, Lee? Is this going to be mature content? Oh, most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Definitely going to be mature content. You have been warned, listeners. If if you offend easily when talking about the human body and sexuality and turning your partner on, this may not be the show for you. However, if you enjoy that content, get something cold to drink and get comfortable because you're going to enjoy this show. If you would like to learn how to make your partner feel really, really good, then we're going to share all kinds of interesting ideas. And I have to thank my guest, Lee, for sharing her mini course with me. I, I went through that over the weekend. And you're going to love this, folks. Lee Jagger is an erotic massage coach. Yes. And she is founder of Rock the Bedroom, the only sex education community of its kind. And I've got her, y'all. I've got her, and she's with us tonight. She helps women be more confident, creative, and playful in the bedroom. Guys, are you paying attention? And have your, are your ears perked up? I'm not going to ask about anything else just yet. We're all kind of assuming that's a fact. Okay, so specializing in erotic massage, she makes it easy for women to embrace their power and take charge between the sheets, knowing exactly where and how to touch a man to drive him wild. Now, she's taught in-person and online workshops internationally and helped women move from a stale, same old sex routine to the next level of passion and playtime. It's her mission to normalize conversations around sexuality and make obligatory sex become a thing of the past. Hi, Lee. Hi, Nikki. I'm so happy to be on your show. <laughs> this is going to be a good one. <laughs> that was too much. Already. That was so much fun. <laughs> Oh, thank you for that warm introduction. I I appreciate the platform to bring this conversation uh, to light because it's, you know, we don't often talk about sex and it's a taboo thing in this culture of North America, where yeah. I live anyway, and um, and it really doesn't need to be so taboo and laden with guilt and shame. And I love normalizing these kinds of conversations because then it brings any problems that you might be suffering in silence with, it brings them out into the light so you can deal with them and they're no longer a problem. So thank you for being a part of this. Well, you know, I think I mean, too many women wait around for the guy to make the first move. And, I, you know... Maybe they lied to me, but every guy I have ever known loves it when a woman steps up and takes charge. Now, I'm not saying every single time she needs to do that, but, you know, it's it's nice and shows she wants him, you know? And who doesn't want to be wanted? Uh, now, exactly. now I, did, I did admit at one point I had I had a roommate... And she she was 
a, a little too aggressive, and she got on the guy's nerves, and I know that because one of my friends was his best friend, and I heard him like complaining about it all the time. But, you know, I, I female empowerment is one of my topics I really like to talk about, and I know that's one of your topics is female empowerment in and out of the bedroom. And, I, you know, you can you can do massage in and out of the bedroom. Just just saying, you know. So, yeah. So, and there's this, there's this lovely dance. Like it doesn't, being in, uh, in charge in the bedroom and being confident doesn't mean that you have to be like a bull in a china shop. You know, sure. there is this nice dance of, um, of allowing men to flex their masculine skills as well. You know, and, and you had mentioned a second ago about, um, you know, men feeling, wanting to feel wanted. And that makes me, um, that makes me think of the person who I learned the most about sex from. And you're not going to believe <laughs> the name I'm about to tell you here. <laughs> but the person that I learned the most about sex was from Mother Teresa. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> I know that, that that sounds a little crazy and funny. But, yes, Mother Teresa, the person who worked with, you know, people in poverty. and But that's where I learned so much because she has this quote. She said, the most terrible poverty is loneliness. And the feeling of being unwanted. Right. And I find that so often men are feeling so unwanted in the bedroom and so lonely. Your bedroom should be a paradise, an oasis. And often it is not because a woman feels hesitant usually to touch a man's penis because she doesn't know what to do with it. That's, you know, that's not usually in her wheelhouse to any great degree. And so men, they feel that. Like when you don't want to touch his penis, he feels like you don't want to touch him. Like they identify heavily with their genitals. And um, that really, that's a punch in the gut when a woman is feeling a little icky around the penis. So that, that makes a, a man feel very unwanted. So, yes, I, I love showing women exactly what to do with a penis and, and all those other juicy areas because it's, it's a win-win. The woman feels more confident and the man's feeling totally wanted and desired. Well, I think sometimes women feel hesitant to touch a man because she can't touch him and be playful without him expecting it's going to lead to sex. What about that? Right. Oh, that is such a great point. I'm glad you're bringing that up. So, um, I yeah, I find that women who are not doing what feels good to them in the bedroom end up blocking all affection. You know, right. like she even she even blocks uh, a, a kiss, or or if he he's touching her in an affectionate way, she kind of cuts that off because she's figuring everything leads to sex. And if she's not wanting to have sex, then she cuts off anything that might be um, a gateway to that. And, right. um, and, and that really stems from a lack of communication. If you have really good communication in your relationship and you can express uh, what your, I call it a container. So, it's sort of like a, a parameter of, okay, this is, this is my intention. This is what I would like. Like, I would like to practice a few little fun techniques on you. I would like to touch your penis and, you know, bring you, bring you to heaven and back for, let, let's say, 10 minutes. And it's, it's, I'm not in the mood for sex. Maybe I'm bloated. Maybe I've got PMS. Maybe there's some vaginal dryness because I'm going through menopause. Whatever, you know, or... I, I, I got an early day tomorrow. I want to connect with you, but I don't want to have sex. I, five, ten minutes, that's, that's what I want to do. And, you know, like setting that container, that is not what often happens. Communication in the bedroom is really lacking. And a lot of people think that words are not so sexy. Like just unfold organically. You know, let's just see what happens. But words are very sexy. 
very, very sexy baby. because it yeah. it makes it makes everybody feel safe. You know, like I don't have to have a guard up because I'm not giving them the wrong idea. I'm playing 100% full on with you because you know my container. You know the the edges of the sand block, sandbox that I want to play in, and so so then people can feel free to touch here, touch there, because it's already been established what the intention of that touching is. Right. There's, there's this really cool um, story. There was a study done where they took preschool kids and a preschool teacher, and they took them to a playground, and there was no fence around this playground. There was no clear delineation of that's the boundary. There was the jungle gym and the swings and all the, all the things for kids to play on. And so they said to the kids, okay, or the, the teacher said to the kids, all right, so you could play on all of, all of this equipment. Go. And the kids, they played a little bit, but for the most part, they, they stuck pretty close to the teacher. And then they t- took the same kids, the same teacher, to a different park where there was a clear boundary. There was a fence clearly marked, the kids knew where the edges of the playground were, and were told, okay, you can play on all of this, go. And they did. They went crazy. They explored every foot of that, that playground right to the edges because they felt safe. There was, there was a clear boundary of, okay, I'm going to play here, and that's how far I can go, and now I know. So I can just go nuts within the borders of what's safe. I like that. And we do that in the bedroom. Like if, if you don't really know, oh God, so what oh my God, he's never done that before. What is he trying to do? Oh, oh, is he trying to go there? I don't I don't like it when people go there. You know, and so you've got this conversation in your mind going and this mind chatter. So you're not really in your body, you're in your head and you're guarded. And so communication is so important. And that's one of the things that I I teach the ladies in my, my programs, a lot of people think it's just hands-on. Like I teach erotic massage, so it's just hands-on. But that really does include a lot of communication because then you can right. go really deep intimacy-wise when you really open up communication and find out what, what is your partner like? What are they not like? You know, what am I willing to do? What am I not willing to do to please you? Great well, conversations, they need to happen. Well, that's that's just like when um, when I've had people that are are experts in BDSM, and and have said on here that that we can learn so much from anyone in that field just about how to improve communication in any relationship, because you've got to yeah. have such clear, you know, detailed communication to be successful with that. You know, it, it you you can't just kind of wing yeah. it. It doesn't work. You know, so it doesn't work. No, and I mean we've got the statistics to prove it. You know, the divorce rate is through the roof. Oh my gosh, when COVID hit, divorces skyrocketed. Um, yeah, and it's because you know people people were in each other's hair twenty four seven with the lockdown and Had, no room yeah. to you know get a little break from what's bugging you and no one's talking about what what's getting on your nerves you know oh it's just a little thing I don't want to talk about it well that's when it's important to talk about it when it's just a little thing because if you don't it'll become a big thing and then it's a huge explosion one day and all of those years of resentment start bubbling to the surface and just you all over your partner and they're like I just forgot to take out the trash (laughs) and you're just like going off on them so yeah communication is what keeps little things little things and never becoming big things and in the bedroom if, if you've got some animosity or resentment going on towards your partner the bedroom is the first sign of of the detriment of that you know, right. you start you start pulling away from your partner because, you, especially women, we you know if if we don't feel connected to our partner, we don't have want to have sex with them. Generally speaking, sure. and so we you know we pull away in the bedroom, and it may not have anything to do with sex, 
but you're just, you know, still got that thing in your mind about him not taking out the trash when you ask him. <laughs> and, and that carries over into the bedroom. So, so yeah, we really got to talk about stuff. And, and it's funny, when you deal with stuff in the bedroom, it ripples out into the rest of your, your relationship. Um, yeah, it really or does. Even if you're not in a relationship, if you're single, but when, you're, when you're confident in the bedroom, you're confident out in the world. It's right. who you are now. So, so there are great ripple effects to cleaning things up in the bedroom. Okay, now for people who hear the word erotic massage and maybe they immediately think, I don't know, Asian massage parlors, red lights, skimpily dressed women, that kind of thing. How would you describe... I, I actually ghost wrote a book about that for somebody. Um, how do you describe erotic massage for people that might be going, what in the world are we talking about? Let's just clarify right. that. Up yeah, so... Yeah, there's a, a lot of very seedy things that come to mind when you think of erotic massage sometimes. And uh, I, would just, I would describe it as this next level of care for your guy. Like, Ooh. it's, yes, it's, it's, a, it's treating, it's pampering him like the king that he is. And, and, it's not just diving into his genitals. It's the, the whole massage. Like I, I teach you how to massage very vanilla parts of the body, like the back and the legs. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and there are very sensual ways to massage a, a man's body that don't even have anything to do with his genitals, but he's getting totally turned on. And, right. and, a big part of erotic massage is taking your time. Like not, like any, anytime you, you, you pull up the word hand job in your brain or on YouTube or, you know, you think about hand job, touching a man's penis for his pleasure. Typically, women start to think of fast and furious movements plain old up and down, you know, let's do this fast, let's whack him off in order to, you know, either A, get him hard, or B, uh, give him an orgasm. And, and it's fast, and it's, it's like you're telling guys you're in a hurry when you're doing it that way, like, okay, let's get this over with. And I, I loved and your video on Instagram about that. That was great. <laughs> I, I, hadn't, yeah. I, hadn't thought, I hadn't thought about it that way, but that was beautiful. I'm like, dang on, she's right. That is so funny. Or they don't they yeah. don't know what they're doing and they're just trying to get done. That was beautiful. Yeah, just trying to get it over with because the thing is if you're like, you know, going up and down fast on his penis, that's not really that fun for us. I mean, we're doing it to please the guy, but really like, yeah, your hand gets sore after a while and you just like, oh, okay, so th- 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 it's a task. And the way I teach erotic massage, it is slow. You're taking your time. Like everything is so slow. It's, it's um, like it feels to, I, to the guy, and I've massaged over 2,000 men, um, they express it as like I am spreading love all over his body. Like Ooh, even, I, haven't, I can't tell you how many times I've heard the, the phrase magic hands. Oh, you have magic in your hands. Or this mm-hmm. is your superpower, and I'm glad you're using it for good. <laughs> and, yeah, there you go. and it's just, it, it makes a man feel loved <clears throat> up. And it's this beautiful dance of, you know, playful teasing and, and basking and lavishing on your man these beautiful um, expressions of love and unconditional affection and adoration. And it, it's just, it's really beautiful. It's, it's the opposite of raunchy. Um, none of my programs feel like porn. None of them feel like bow chicka wow wow. You know, like there's, there's no, you know, uh, Barry White playing in the background. Like it's, it's all very professional and tasteful and, but also playful. And um, it, it's playtime. Like, 
I, I, I call it playtime, juicy time. Uh, it, no, no, I, more than no, I call I like it Barry, sex. I like Barry White in the background, but okay. I mean, Barry White's great, but <laughs> I, I specifically didn't choose that type of music as the background right. to my programs because then it, it's really, it's a fine line between, um, you know, sexual content that feels porn-like and right. um, professional. And I really wanted to be both feet on the side of professional. You can, I mean, it's, it's already spicy. You're, you're looking at a, a naked man's body. So it's already You are. Spicy. You are. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I keep things really professional and uh, tasteful. That way, it it's um, it's taken seriously. It's because um, there's so much se- sexual content on the internet out there that is not tasteful, and it ends up I don't know, it it trivializes um, what sex and intimacy really can be like. Right. Um, it can really like, it can you know erotic massage can save marriages. It can liberate women who felt oppressed in the bedroom all their lives. Like, it's, it's a powerful thing. And so I want people to take it seriously. <laughs> right. Well, that's, yeah. that's like, I, I was, um, I had a headhunter come after me and ask me to, well, when this show originally started, and they wanted me to, to come on their network. And because they had heard me on a bunch of interviews, and, and they're like, we're looking for somebody to do a show about relationships and sex. And, and so they were trying to get me on their network, and, and they said, would you consider starting a show? And um, I, was, I was abundantly clear for, with them that my plan with the show, if I did one, was to be very educational. I said, I, I want it to be sexy, but it will be classy. It will not be trashy. And I'm not going for pure, pure shock value. I said, you, you have enough of that trash out there. That's not what I want. I said, you know, I, I want educational. I want one-on-one with my guests and, you know, speaking to the audience. I said, but I, I won't go for shock value. I'm not, you know, if that's what you're looking for, you got the wrong person. Because <clears throat> like, there's, yeah. there's enough of that out there. So, so yeah, I can totally agree with you. Yeah, and I, I'm trying to undo some of the damage that's been done uh, yeah. with porn, where you, people, especially young people, uh, are they're taking it very seriously. Like, hey, oh, yeah. so that's that's what I do with a girl in the bedroom? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, well, or a woman, like, oh, I'm supposed to, you know, let them come all over my face? That's just a given? You know, like, the, there's um, the, there's a lot of, damage to that's been done with porn and inaccurate ideas of what sex um, can be in the bedroom and how loving it can be and how um, intimate it can be. And so, right. yeah, I'm, I'm on that team of, of people out there who are trying to bring back the intimacy in sex and the connection. Totally, totally agree. Well, it's like I was I was talking to somebody and they were they were saying something about what about the girls that that just want it, just be slammed up against the wall. That's all they like. And I'm like, they haven't got a clue in the world how to have sex, and they really haven't got a clue in the world how to have any kind of intimacy with anybody, you know. And and I I love yeah. the the thing that you were talking about in the the mini course about you know once once you put your hands on the person. Make sure that that one hand doesn't leave them, you know, and right. and even even I found you know the even a, a really soft, light, gentle touch can just give the person chills, you know, and and right, you know, you you talk to like these these you know sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen year olds, and they're out here having sex, and and you say that kind of thing to them. And they're just, I mean, they just get this look like, huh? You know, I mean, they're, yeah. there's, yeah, it, it, there's no, there, finesse, it, you know, it, it, it's, no finesse, exactly. you know, it's, it's like, you, you may think you got the world by the horns here or, or whatever, you know, but there's a whole world to explore, you know, 
put put the porn away and start exploring the body. Slow it down, ease it up, and just yeah. Forget forget what you've seen so far and just take some time and explore the body. I mean, I I did a an ebook about um kissing from head to toe, right? And right. just just say, you know, explore from like the the top of the head to the bottom of the toes, you know, and just have fun with it. Any any possible yeah. spot on the body, kiss it, lick it, you know, just explore and see what feels good. You're going to be amazed at all the spots that just feel good. Same thing with a massage. You can massage any area of the body, and you're mm-hmm. probably going to be amazed how good it feels. You know, and I actually, exactly. you'd, you'd be amazed. I have an entire section on there about massaging the legs and the feet. So, yeah, you know. Oh, yeah, very yummy. And and there's something to be said for taking your time in that, you know, it's, especially women, but men also, you just don't think of it as related to men, but we need to be warmed up, you know? Yes. Like, think about it. If If a guy were to come up to you and just reach for your kitty and just start, you know, stimulating your clit fast and furious, that is not really going to turn you on so much. Like, you need a little warm-up, like, kiss me, touch me, meander around my body, you know, like, um, one of the ways I describe erotic massage is taking like a Sunday drive along the coast and just like mm-hmm. meandering along every curve of his body. Not that a, an erotic massage needs to take an hour or two or three, like, but even a five minute quickie can feel luxurious and like you're basking in it, like you're really. It feels like you're taking your time, even though it's just a quickie. There is there is an art to the D's. <laughs> yes, and it there you go. Everyone to figure out what that is. And I will mention too, because you had said, um, you know, young people out there don't know, and honestly, even older people don't know about all the light touches. There is one um, very counterintuitive touch, but very effective. Um, and it's a free resource uh, for anybody out there. You go to rockthebedroom.com, and uh, right near the top, there is a, a touch that's called Drive Your Man Wild <laughs> or Drive Him Wild. And totally free, super easy. You won't believe how – in fact, most people, when they see it, they're like, Lee, come on. This isn't anything. This isn't going to do anything for my guy. Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh, you would be surprised <laughs> at all of the the hairs that will be standing up on his body and you will watch him getting hard by the minute, by the second. Um, and it's, anyone could do it, super easy, there's no tricks to it, and it's, it is a very light touch. But people don't typically think about that. They're, they're grabbing, they're grasping. And um, when you slow things down, like I say to my my uh, clients, slow equals moan. Repeat after me. Slow <laughs> equals moan. Your guy will moan way more if you slow it down. So, yeah, take your time, That's ladies. <clears throat> so what's, what's the motivation to become a erotic coach for women now and, and even – is there a motivation for women that want sex? I can see that. But what about for women that are more hesitant to have sex? Is there a motivation for them to become an erotic massage coach? Well, um, well, I teach I teach women how to touch their man like at home, not necessarily to become a coach themselves. Um, it's definitely not for everyone. Um, the motivation for me uh, was quite honestly uh, money. <laughs> I, there you go. I was, oh yeah, like I'll, I'm totally transparent about that. Um, in the beginning, so I was very passive in the bedroom. I did not, um, 
I did not initiate sex. I was a sexual wallflower. Um, sex was something that that I enjoyed the orgasm, but I did not enjoy um, reciprocating any of the, the delicious foreplay that I would receive because I didn't know how to touch a guy's penis. Uh, so I would rather not go there because I had a bad experience in my early 20s where I was feeling really, um, really bold and daring and I was going down on a guy and uh, the more I did the softer he became <laughs> well, that's, that's more not good. <laughs> oh my gosh and you know I'm young and no one's saying anything he's not saying actually you know if you did this instead like no one there you go lack of communication no one's saying right. anything in my head I'm screaming <laughs> begging to be struck down by lightning um, and so that I carried that through and I, I just never really went there. I, I felt very incompetent in the bedroom. And so um, fast forward, uh, I'm in my 40s and I was actually really broke. I was homeless for a while. Um, I, I was staying in this, uh, this hoarder's living room with my young son in tow. And it, I, it was a low point in my life. And so I placed this ad on Craigslist for um, Swedish massage to make an extra, extra buck. And this lady called me one day answering my ad and she said, you know, I bought this uh, massage office and um, I let go a bunch of ladies who don't really know how to massage, but you seem to know what you're doing. Have you ever thought of erotic massage? <laughs> and I'm like, ah. Uh. Uh, that's the happy ending, right? And I, was, I didn't really know anything about that world. And she's, she says, yes. And I'm like, yeah, no, that's not my dealio at all. Um, but she, she started throwing out dollar figures, and I was literally hungry, literally. I could tell you to the penny how much money I had to my name because that's how little money I had. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take one for Team Jagger, and I, I gotta, I gotta keep a roof over my son's head. Any parent out there knows you'll do anything for your kid, right? So I thought, you know, let's just do this for a couple weeks just to get ahead. I, I was not totally jazzed about the idea of doing erotic massage um, for two reasons. One, I didn't know, I didn't know how to do a happy ending not well enough to charge for it anyway. And two, the idea of the kind of guys, strangers, who I would be getting very intimate with, I, I, I had the stereotype in my head of this old creepy dude. And I just thought, oh, God, I can't do that. But, you know, a, a girl needs to, to keep a roof over her son's head. So, um so I, I, I went in and I did a forehand, which is me on one side of the table and a seasoned pro on the other side of the table. And I'm just kind of following what she does and taking mental notes and just dipping my toes in the water. And the first client was this hot, I don't know, 31, 32-year-old um, in the military. So he had a great body. He was smart, funny, gorgeous. Oh my gosh! Like I would ask him out. He was he he was hot, and I, I'm thinking, wow, I really mis uh, misjudged what the clientele was like, <laughs> and I really enjoyed touching this man's body. And afterwards, I said to the the pro, I said to her, you know, I'd like to come back tomorrow to do another forehand. That wasn't as bad as I thought. Uh, would you be op open to doing that with me? And she said, actually, I'm double booked right now. Um, can you, I've got this one guy. Can you take the other guy? And I was freaking out because I didn't think I was ready to go solo. But I also had this thought in my head, if you walk away, Lee, you're, you're not going to come back. You're, you're not going to come back. So just do it. Just jump in. Make it till you make it, and you'll be fine. He'll never know he was your, your first solo client. Just, just come on. Suck it up. So I did, and I walked in, and who's on the table? Old creepy dude. <laughs> I'm like, oh, crap. And she went in with like a 40-year-old Marlboro man-looking guy, and, and she gave me the old dude. Oh. 
anyway, no rapport was built. Not like he was not interested in communication, um, any conversation whatsoever. He didn't care who I was. I felt like a mechanical blow up doll. I felt very objectified. And partway through the massage, he got he gets off the table and says, "Okay, you get on the table, and I'm going to massage you now." And I'm like, "What just happened? Oh my god! I just lost control of the room, and I didn't even realize that I was supposed to be the one in control in the room." And um, and I somehow got him back on the table. There was no way I was going to fully surrender all control. And I got him back on the table. I was professional. I finished the session. And partway through, I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, Lee, you don't know, like, those boundaries I was talking about before? I didn't know what my boundaries were. I didn't know how to articulate my boundaries. I didn't know how to enforce my boundaries. Like, this guy walked all over me because I let him. Right. I totally had the, the door wide open. And, and I realized, wow, you know what, Lee, you're going to learn a lot about yourself by doing this work. This is way more than meets the eye. This is more than just, you know, rubbing a guy down. You're going to learn about you. And so it was guy number two who made me go, oh, yeah, I'm doing this. And... Six years later and 2,000 penises, uh, I became really good at owning the bedroom. And in my personal life, um, having sex or any kind of intimate time with, with the guy I was dating, um, I, was, I was a badass. Like I all of a sudden was not passive in the bedroom. I loved initiating. I couldn't, I was so eager about sex. I, nothing made me turned on more than pushing a guy down on a bed and go, oh, honey, you just lay there. I'm (laughs) going to have my way with you and you're going to love it. (laughs) And, and just feeling that level of confidence. And I realized that one day when I was with a client, I thought, wow, look at the 180 my my life has taken because of this work. I wish I'd had someone like me to teach me these skills back when I was 20. And I would have had a way better sex life all these decades later. I'm now in my 50s. And and then I thought, wait a minute, I can't be the only one. And I could be the teacher for people out there who are suffering in silence in the bedroom, who don't really have a lot of confidence in the bedroom, um, who, who don't have a very big sex drive, et cetera. And, I, and it turned out I was not the only one. And so I decided to teach what I, what I discovered. And, um, and I discovered a whole lot of ways <laughs> to touch a guy's genitals. <laughs> No, yeah, that, that's fun for the women too. You know, like it's not just about getting him off. It's about a woman doing whatever she's doing in the bedroom and loving it and feeling empowered by it and eager to do it. It's not about just, you know, convincing women to like sex. This is about changing what sex looks like and making it way more fun for women to engage in the bedroom in an empowered manner so that was my motivation i i just wanted to put food on the table but it turned out to be my life's purpose (laughs) and i get so much gratification from watching women just come into their their own you know inner sex goddessness and embrace that part of them and not be shamed by it we shouldn't feel shamed by our, you know, our sexuality. It's it's amazing the transformation. Just about every guest I've had on here and myself have had by getting into a sex positive field. It is just it's it's amazing, heartwarming and amazing. Right. <laughs> so yeah, it changes everything, and yeah. and you you would think that it's. It's really uh, erotic massage anyway is just about the guy. You know, like, well, the guy gets a lot out of this. What does the, what does the girl get out of it? But really, like the confidence, no one wants to look bad in bed. Everyone wants to feel empowered in the bedroom. And this definitely gives that to you. And even like if you're single and you're dating, 
and you're sitting across the table from your date, instead of thinking, God, I hope he likes me, you're thinking, oh, big boy, you're going to love me. You know, (laughs) like that kind of confidence, that's fun to know that you are the queen and you get to choose your king and you are God's gift to any man who is lucky enough to, to get you in the bedroom. Like that is intoxicating and there's huge ripple effects even out of the bedroom. Like, you know, I, I have clients who report, yeah, my, my um, road rage is like down to nothing. I'm all mellowed out now. Or, um, oh, I love it when, when I'm in, the, in a grocery store lineup, and I hear this from, from my clients, my ladies too. If I'm in a grocery store lineup and some guy doesn't see me and he like cuts in front of me in line, like, especially with the six foot rule, you know, there's so much room between you and the person in front of you. And, right. and then a guy would like cut, cut in front of me and the old me would have just let that slide and I'd be fuming inside, not saying anything and totally resenting that guy. But now there's no way that would happen. I would, you know, very politely, but very firmly let him know that he is behind me (laughs) in line and, and just, you know, being able to ask for a raise at work, not being intimidated by, by male coworkers or a male boss. Um, you know, like there's huge ripple effects when you are empowered in the bedroom or you're in any kind of sex positive field. Oh my gosh. The ripple yeah. effects are absolutely huge. And, and ladies, oh boy, when I, okay, a guy actually said these words. He said exactly this. A man would swim oceans for a woman who would do this for him. So there's this law of reciprocation where if you are loving up a man so much and he's feeling this degree of care, this degree of of pampering, um, you bet he's going to want to reciprocate in lots of different ways. Like, honey, let's go shopping. Those shoes that you wanted, yeah, let's go get them. (laughs) He will do anything to get back to that sweet spot. And so this is not a one-sided thing. It comes around, and men, they're not going to want you to outdo them in the bedroom. They're going to want to turn the tables on you, and they're going to want to take you to, to Venus, <laughs> you know? So, so there, uh, women get a lot out of learning the skill set in the bedroom and, and being generous in the bedroom. It comes around. It really does. All right, well, let me tell you, um, what, let, let's, let's kind of spill the beans here, okay? So, guys, <laughs> close your ears because I don't want you all to know that we're giving this away. But what, <laughs> what do men wish that women knew about touching a man's body? Have, have we already given that away? And even, even if we have, let's just kind of be real blunt and make sure that women know it because they might have missed it. So let's, yeah. let's just spill the beans and give it to them. I would say, you know, men want women to touch it like they like it. Oh, you know? I like that. That's good. Put, well put. And I actually, yeah, I, those, those words came out of the mouth of a, a male client of mine when I was doing the, the one-on-ones for the guys before I started teaching women, a guy actually said, oh, God, I just wish women would touch it like they like it. Because they can feel, ladies, okay, here's another quote by Mother Teresa. I told you she taught me everything I know about sex. <laughs> she that, said, that <laughs> it's not about how much we give. It's about how much love we put into giving. And she's absolutely right. Like, it's not just about touching a guy. It's not about whacking him off. It is about loving on him, loving on his most private and prized parts. You know, it's like he can feel whether you are in a rush. He can feel whether you are really into it or not. He, can, he doesn't even have to look at you to feel you rolling your eyes. 
if you're like, oh, yeah. come on, let's like, hurry up towards the finish line. Like, he can feel that, ladies. You've got to touch it in a way that makes him feel that you are loving on it. Like, you could be here all day long, that kind of feeling. And not that you need to be, but that's a, how it's got to feel. And that is the secret sauce to really fulfilling men's fantasies. They want you to be into it. They want you to love his penis, not just tolerate it, not just, you know, do, make it feel like a chore to touch it. it. This is like, I can't wait to get my hands on your penis. Not that even you need to have sex, but just like you're not afraid of it anymore. It's like a playground to you. When you know 69 different techniques just for his genitals alone, and you know that there are 10 different areas, spots, just for his genitals that give totally different sensations, and you know how to, to um, caress all of those parts in ways that it will make him see God and make you look better than any ex that he's ever had, oh, my gosh, he, he's putty in your hands. He's putty in your hands. You are, <laughs> you're, you're the hokey pokey. You're, you're what it's all about <laughs> when you do that. So touch it like you like it, honeys. <laughs> well, and that's, you know, touch it like you like it. I, that's so simple. But, yeah, awesome. So I like that. So what, what is the one thing women get wrong about the penis? Let's see. Well, uh, we already talked about going too fast. That's definitely one thing that some people get wrong. Um, here's another thing. So when he can't get it up, when he cannot get an erection, his penis is flaccid, women often assume, okay, well, there's nothing you can really do with it. I can't stick it in. <laughs> We're not having sex. And, and most people assume sex equals intercourse. Like that's, that's the pinnacle. That's that's the ultimate outcome is intercourse. And let me tell you, there are things better than intercourse for the guys and the girls. Way better. Um, I'm just saying, my hands can do things my kitty can't. <laughs> so so when, when women are confronted with a penis that is flaccid, they assume that they can't do anything with it. But I'm here to tell you that for one thing, the nerve endings don't die. Like we know that a penis is very sensitive. It's a very <laughs> sensitive area of a man's body. And that's why it feels so good to be touched there. And those nerve endings don't go away. They don't go dormant when he loses an erection. He, it still feels good to be touched down there. And there are so many ways to touch a flaccid penis that feels really good for the guy and are relatively easy to do for the woman, too. Um, another thing, when he has a flaccid penis, he can still have an orgasm. And it is still, um, it, it's easy to bring him to an orgasm. That, that should not be a deterrent at all. There are so many ways to do that. And I... In my program, um, Erotic Massage Mastery, I, there's a whole section on, okay, so he, here's a technique, and it's demonstrated on an erect penis. But, hey, if your guy can't get erect, here's how you modify it. There's so many ways to, to modify juicy, juicy touches for your guy. And there's lots of reasons why he can't get it up. And it may not have anything to do with how you're touching him. Like, it could feel so good to him and he's still not getting an erection it could be you know diabetes has something to do with that stress right. um you know the hormone fluctuations you know low testosterone there, there there are so many um fleeting and chronic um reasons why a man can't get an erection and so he's already got so much um angst around that he's already got shame going on around that he already feels pretty bad like his his manhood is not performing that hurts a guy 
He's already got that negative self-talk in his head. So oh, yeah. let's not add to it, ladies. Let's not look at a flaccid penis and go, uh, uh, let's watch a movie. <laughs> you know, like, right. uh, pass. You know, like, dive in on that, and I know how to show you how. Um, yeah, let, that's a, a huge thing that women get wrong, is that flaccid penis, they can't do anything with it. Couldn't be anything more more wrong with that statement. <laughs> <laughs> and you know it's <laughs> that's also the show the other day where uh, a woman had the attitude that any initiative of any kind in the entire relationship was I mean even even being romantic was 100% her husband's responsibility her, her attitude basically was not my job so what what if a woman has an attitude and she says, Well why why is it my job to rock the bedroom? Why right. why didn't he do it? And you and, know what? Women, I, women have that attitude sometimes. What what absolutely. do you tell them? Absolutely. I I would say, you know what, honey, you're right, it's not your job to rock the bedroom, but it's your job to rock yourself. It's your it's sure. your job to show up for you. Like, are you just going to go, go along with whatever he wants to do? Are you just going to be complacent? Are you, like, rocking the bedroom is not you just laying there with your legs open. That is not rocking the bedroom. And that sounds like obligatory sex to me. You know, like, uh, yeah, okay, you know, like, just, and, and it, sounds, it sounds a lot like I was back before I got, I, I acquired all these skills that I have now that I teach my clients, I was a very selfish lover. I made the guy do all the work. I was a great receiver. Um, I loved foreplay. I loved receiving foreplay. I did not like giving foreplay. And I realized that it was because I just didn't know how to give foreplay. Like, I didn't, I didn't have all the skills. And, you know, I was totally mortified when I did um, – try to step out of my comfort zone and try some stuff. So I think I think it's a coping mechanism for women who don't feel empowered. They're afraid yeah. to step out on that limb and look bad in bed. Like I know for me, I would rather look selfish in bed than bad in bed. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> so that I can relate to that sentiment where it's not my job to, to rock his world. And it's not, but it's your job to rock your world, honey. And the more that you are owning your place in the bedroom and putting on those big girl panties and and reciprocating a little bit, the the more enjoyable sex is going to feel. Way more enjoyable. I love sex now. Whereas before, I did not at all. At it, all. It, it's amazing the women that don't think it's, their responsibility to rock their own world. It's like, no, 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 no. He, he's responsible for all my happiness. It's like, no, yeah. actually it's not. No. It's not because then you are at the whim of them. Like if, if yeah. they're, they can't read your mind. And so they're not going to know how to rock your world the way that you could potentially. And, and the thing is, like I tell women this, and it's so <laughs> – it's such a difficult conversation initially until people dive into my stuff because they don't know what they don't know. 80%, like, so 6% of the stuff in my head is stuff that I know. I know I know. There's 14% of the stuff in my head is the stuff that I know I don't know. Right. I don't, I know, I'm aware. Okay, so that's about 16% totaling about 20% of the stuff to know. 80% is stuff you don't even know that you don't know. You don't even know the possibility. So women who are not all jazzed about um, being and like uh, initiating in the bedroom, it's because they don't even know what is possible for them. They don't that's even true. know, and that's why I offer the, the free drive him wild touch 
because it's sort of it's a it's cracking the door open to oh hey this is easy and oh my god that feels really good making him squirm under my touch oh wow that feels awesome that I am the catalyst to make him moan like that feels so good but until you actually sit in that driver's seat it's scary because if you don't know how to drive sitting in a driver's seat is scary you think you're going to crash. There's too many things to think about. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, what do you do with all these things in, in this car? But if you're a race car driver, you're trained, you know, to, at, at that level of performance, oh, you get in a Lamborghini and you're in heaven. You're just you're enjoying the ride, right, because you know what to do. So women oh, yeah. who are not enjoying it, it's usually because they just don't know what to do and they don't know what they don't know. They it, there's so much more than just putting a penis in a vagina. There's so much more that's way more enjoyable than Definitely. just intercourse. And being in control in the bedroom when you actually know what to do is a very powerful thing. Being in control in the bedroom when you don't know what to do, scary. So, Definitely. yeah, I can see why people would say, yeah, let him do it. Because then it's safe. It's, I don't have to take a chance. I don't have to step out on a limb and learn something new. Yeah, it's lazy. Well, believe it or not, we're just about out of time. So do you want to tell the audience how they can find you online and about your Rock the Bedroom Challenge? Yeah. um, So my website is rockthebedroom.com. That's where you get the the free resource thing and check out, you know, all the stuff I got going on. But um, the Rock the Bedroom Challenge, um, that is so fun because it's a a five-day online live event. All you need is a computer and Zoom. Um, And I, for, for 90 minutes a day, for five days, I show women how to really embrace their inner sex goddess. Uh, we will actually, I will actually be doing a live demo on a naked man showing women who are following along at home, <laughs> hopefully with a man of their own where they can practice these skills, and I will actually be demonstrating erotic massage techniques. Um, and, and it's just a way for women to dip their toes into this world. Like the world I live in is really really empowered and really exciting and fun. And this is my way to help women just get a taste of that and, and help women see the things that they don't know that they don't know <laughs> and realize, wow, they're actually fun. And it's not scary now that I know them. And so that's going on July 21st through 25th. So it's come up really soon. And you can find all, all the information about that at rockthebedroom.com slash sign up, S-I-G-N-U-P. Awesome. And you just have enough time, actually. So definitely want to take a look. Yeah, it's it's unlike anything that's out there. It, <laughs> I know, I've looked. <laughs> Yeah, it's really great stuff. Yeah. Welcome to my it's, world. <laughs> it's so much fun seeing what's out there, too. Oh, my gracious. So. Yeah. Honestly. Well, I've had a lot of fun, and that hour just flew by. That did fly by. Thank you so much for having me on. This has been a really lovely conversation, and thank you for being the light in the world, helping to bring normalcy to having these conversations and opening up dialogue in the bedroom. Thank you so much, Nikki. I just, there's, there's so much of a need to empower women in particular. And I, I love that you mentioned that the guilt and shame at the beginning, because that's, that's one of my biggest motivators is to help people to, to get rid of that and realize that, that being a sexual being is not something we have to feel guilty about or ashamed about. It's it's fascinating how many of my guests say that without me saying a word. It's just, yes, I love it. So thank you very much for being here, Lee. And listeners. My pleasure. Listeners, I'll be with you next time on Ready for Love Radio.